Hello everyone! In this video, I will show you how I painted my amazing Spider-Man model for Marvel Crisis Protocol. It's worth noting that I painted him in three separate parts, first being the explosion, second being the daily bugle sign, and third being Spider-Man himself. Here you can see a list of paints that I used, and I will also have it noted on each part of the painting process which paint I'm using. Alright, let's jump into it. Starting with the explosion, we're going to be using Game Workshop's Tesseract Glow. This paint works similarly to a contrast paint, so when you see me applying it, I'm going to be doing it in the same fashion I would if it was a contrast paint. I decided to use Game Workshop's Tesseract Glow because I wanted the explosion to look like a green goblin bomb had gone off, and that it was kind of a green smoke type of explosion. Moving on to Spider-Man himself, I'm going to be using Game Workshop's Black Templar Contrast Paint. I'm going to be applying this to the parts of his costume that would be red, because he has these like spider web lines on the red part. This Black Templar paint will fill into the recesses of which would be those spider web. That way when we paint on the red part, it will still show these black lines. I'm also going to apply the Black Templar to the Daily Bugle sign. I want the Daily Bugle sign to be a lot darker than what I primed it in. And when we apply the silver and other colors, having a darker base tone will work a lot better. Now that our Black Templar has dried, I'm going to use Game Workshop's Mephiston Red. We're going to take this red and we're going to dry brush all of the areas that we painted black before. I want to get a decent amount of coverage with this Mephiston Red, basically covering all of the red parts while still leaving the recessed lines that would be the spider webs black. To highlight the Memphis in red that we just dry brushed on Spider-Man, I'm then going to come in with Game Workshop's Evil Sun's Scarlet. And in the same manner that I applied the Memphis in red, I'm just going to dry brush the Evil Sun's Scarlet on top of it with slightly less coverage but still covering a lot of the model. Going back to our explosion once it's dried, I'm going to come in with a black and gray mix of paint to give it a slightly darker gray color. And I'm just going to tap the raised areas of the explosion to kind of give it a smoke-like look. I'll also take this black and gray mix and cover what would be the rocks or the metal parts that are flying with the explosion. And after we do this black-gray mix, I'm just going to come in with the same gray that I used and cover all the same areas as before, but just slightly less coverage. And after that, then I will mix the same gray with a little bit of white and do even less coverage on the same areas, trying to create this smoke bomb look effect. Just so I don't have to waste paint or remix a mixture, now is the time that I'm going to take this white and gray mix and paint Spider-Man's webs on both him and the Daily Bugle, as well as dry brush some of this mixture onto the Daily Bugle side. I want to clean up Spider-Man's model a little bit more before I apply the blue paint. So I'm going to come in with some white paint and line out uh, all the blue parts of his costume that have been covered with the red when I was dry brushing.
For the blue, I'm going to be using Army Painter's High Lord Blue. I'm going to apply this to all of the blue parts of his costume. And this is a speed paint, so the speed paint is very similar to a contrast paint, if not the same. The coverage that I'm trying to get with this High Lord Blue is to really darken in the recesses, but not to cover it too much, because we are going to highlight the raised part of the costume later on. Once I've finished painting this High Lord Blue and it's dried, I'm going to go ahead and glue Spider-Man to the explosion and glue the explosion to one of the bases that I've already pre-painted. This is going to make it a lot easier moving forward in the painting process to be able to hold the base rather than hold Spider-Man himself. For the highlights on the blue parts of Spider-Man's costume, I'm going to be using Vallejo's Electric Blue. This is one of my favorite blues, and I'm just going to go through all of the parts that would be muscular or where his muscles are popping up and paint this electric blue over it. I'm going to do a lot of coverage with this electric blue to almost to the point where the High Lord blue that we used earlier is just a lining in his costume in the recessed area. As you see, I will go through the entire model. I apologize about how I turned him upside down, but I'm gonna just paint all of this raised areas so all of his muscles pop and he looks extremely muscular. And the whole costume will be brightened up a lot from doing this as well. Once I've finished with the highlight for the electric blue, I'm going to come in and use white paint on all of the areas that we cut out and put green stuff in. These are all the parts of Spider-Man's costume that are going to be cut, and I'm going to go over this with a flesh tone. So I'm going to use Game Workshop's, I don't know how to say it, Dark Oath Flesh, and I'm going to paint Spider-Man's face and all of these cut spaces that I made in the costume. It's really up to you how much of this flesh contrast paint you want to use, but I'm going to use a decent amount. Normally I like to highlight the flesh contrast after I finished with it, but because he's beat up and he's supposed to look kind of dirty, I'm going to leave the skin part looking pretty dirty. Moving on to his hair, I'm going to use Game Workshop's Snake Bite Leather. Similar to the flesh contrast paint that I used, normally I would highlight it up, but I want his hair to look really dirty, so I'm just going to use a decent amount of this contrast, leaving it pretty dark. Yeah, one of the reasons I didn't attach the Daily Bugle sign yet is because with that sign in the way, it would really be hard to paint his hair as well as the red spider on the back of his suit. I'm going to take some Evil Sun's Scarlet and paint up part of the mask that I have that's on the flesh part of him. And then I'm also going to go and paint the spider on the back of his costume, this red as well. I 
one of the things that I noticed is that Spider-Man's red in this costume is really dark. I don't highlight it more, but if I was to come back to the model, that might be something that I touch up on. And you could as well. If you wanted to make him a little bit brighter, uh, I would totally be supportive of brightening the red. I'm going to come in with some black paint. This could be any black. I use generic brands most of the time. And we're going to paint the eye because the eye trim of his eye is black. And we're also going to paint the spider on his chest black. Some people like to paint just the trim of his eye black, but we're going to be going over it with white. So I'm just going to paint the whole thing black and then just cover what part I want with it white later on. Moving on to the white, we're just going to come in and paint the middle of this eye white as best as we can, leaving the trim around it black. And how much coverage of this white that you want to do will leave the expression on his face. If you want to make it really thin, you can look make it look like Spider-Man's squinting, but if you want to make it larger, look like Spider-Man's eyes more open. There we go. As you can see, I also painted some white on his actual eye. Moving on to the Daily Bugle sign, I'm going to be using some silver. As you can see, I'm using Vallejo's silver, but you could use any silver. You know, sil paints like black, white, silver, I, I kind of go through all different brands of, so it, it, it's really up to you. And I wouldn't say that I'm dry brushing this, but more of a stippling. And I'm going to do the same thing with the bronze. And when I paint silver and when I paint bronze, I like to leave some of it painted gray so it's not all shiny. So most of the parts that I go over with the silver, I'll then cover up part of it with bronze as well, leaving the same ratio of shiny and not shiny. Moving on to the symbols of the Daily Bugle sign, I'm going to be using Game Workshop's Everland Sunset. We're just going to paint this middle part yellow, and the D and the B for Daily Bugle, we will paint a different color. When I'm painting all of these symbols on the Daily Bugle sign, I'm not going to do a full coverage. I'm kind of just going to tap it, covering some of it, because I want it to look like the sign's older and that paint has chipped off. I also didn't want the lettering to be too bright, so I decided to use Games Workshop's Mephisted Red instead of Vidi Evil Sun's Scarlet. And as you see, I'm only uh, covering a decent amount, but not all of it. And after we're finished with that sign, we'll go ahead and just glue it all together, snapping it in, connecting the spider webs and the Daily Vehicle sign to the explosion. wanted to say thank you for watching this video and if you have any questions feel free to ask in the comment section and I will respond as soon as I can.